Hey guys, I just wanted to give you a quick little heads up about this video. I do use scenes from movies and video games that might be off-putting, disgusting, or shocking. So if you were thinking about having a snack while you watch, maybe don't. Viewer discretion is advised. So, bathrooms. Those are scary. <laughs> Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and today I'd like to discuss the fear of bathrooms. I'll be examining the potential reasons that cause the frequent usage of scary bathrooms in the media and speculate on why they cause fear and anxiety. Is the fear something innate caused by psychological reasons, or is the media playing a much larger role in manufacturing these fears by using bathrooms to create horrific situations? Let's discuss! Bathrooms as we know them today are fairly modern in the grand scheme of things. The earliest bathrooms for bathing and showering purposes were public bath houses, which were all over the world, but you're probably the most familiar with the ones from ancient Greece and ancient Rome, as they've had their fair share of depictions in the media. Bathing was not always the private affair it is today. In Greece, it was meant to be a social event where people could relax and talk about their day, all while being invigorated by the waters and steam. In ancient Rome, even wealthier households who had their own private thermi would still make use of the communal baths so they could socialize. In modern times, bathrooms have become very solitary. They're now a separate room in your house, and the more private bathrooms have gotten, the scarier they've become. Today, people use bathrooms for a variety of things, whether that thing is emptying bodily fluids, taking a comforting bath with candles and wine, getting away from a stressful situation and taking a breather, or just getting ready for a nice night on the town. A lot of Secretive things also go on in the bathroom, and just as an example, sometimes when I go out and feel like an anxiety attack is bubbling up, I usually head towards the nearest bathroom so I can splash some water on my face or just take a beat before going back out into the public. It can be a comforting place or a vulnerable place or a claustrophobic place, so it's easy to see why media would focus on the bathroom to create scary situations. But are the media depictions why we find them so scary? For example, a lot of people are apprehensive about bathrooms and video games. Are they scary because over time entertainment has made them this way? Or is there a more hardwired anxiety separate from that and more based on the room itself? Let's take a moment to look at things we typically find in a traditional modern bathroom, other than mold, which is very frightening in its own way. We have the bathtub and or the shower, a sink, some kind of unit for storage, and usually a mirror. Let's talk about toilets, since we spend so much of our lives on one. Toilets are fucking scary. Ever catch yourself checking the toilet before sitting on it, fearing that something terrible might be in there, ready to attack your butt? I have, and I have no shame in saying this, you've done it too, you know you have. Or just think about when you were a kid and you were learning to use the potty for the first time. This fear starts early. First of all, from a child's point of view, the toilet is going to look huge. And what if you fall in? Does that mean you get flushed down the pipes like everything else that gets thrown in there? It's freaky. It doesn't help to know that there are some creatures that can actually make their way up through the pipes and into your toilet. Not just innocent water bugs, but rats. Though it may not be a common occurrence, yes, rats can end up in your toilet bowl. And that thought alone is unsettling enough, but what if it wasn't just an innocent rat? What if it's a ghoulie? In this scene from Ghoulies 2, an innocent man gets torn anew. Well, you know. Even scarier is the fact that Ghoulies got a sequel. A lot of B-movies in the horror genre really love to get creative with the toilet. Killer Clowns from Outer Space does something similar, and in Street Trash, instead of making something come out of the toilet, someone gets pulled in. This thing really only serves one function, flushing away bodily fluids, yet horror has turned it into something very fearful. Even video game Majora's Mask has a hand coming out of the toilet. Really, Zelda? Really? Come on. Of course, a lot of these examples fall into the corny or comical side, but despite that, they did plant the seed for thinking something might be lurking in the toilet. Though I think the most notorious use of them that also came across as genuinely frightening is from the movie Dreamcatcher, based on the book by Stephen King, who, in general, has been known to make pretty good use of the bathroom using his grisly imagination. In Dreamcatcher, a parasite eats its way out of a man's body while he's using the toilet. Two characters find the man still sitting there in a catatonic-like state, and when they push him over, they find a small but fierce alien in the toilet bowl. Though this is not the best Stephen King adaptation, 
or the best movie, if we're honest. I did find this scene rather tense, and the idea of someone pooping out an alien very much squicks me out. The idea of anything other than what previously inhabited my stomach being in the toilet bowl terrifies me. I can deal with water bugs, and I could probably deal with rats, but anything else is not welcome. But I don't want to just focus on scary toilets. There are other things that contribute to making bathrooms unnerving. Let's move on to mirrors. For centuries, different meanings of mirrors and mythology and fairy tales reflect how we use them in fiction today. Uh, I'm not really sure about that pun. Reflections in general have been symbols for a variety of things. In Greek mythology, the story of Narcissus describes a young man lured over to a pool where he then sees his own reflection and dies because he cannot tear himself away from it. I wonder what that's supposed to symbolize. In a lot of various folklore, your reflection is supposed to be able to show you who you really are, and they can also predict evil. Take vampires, for example. Not saying every vampire is inherently evil, hashtag not all vampires, but in a lot of literature they have less than savory intentions and have been depicted as not having a reflection when posed in front of the mirror. They've also been used countless times as a magical object, especially in fairy tales. They've been thought to be able to predict the future or give the owner of the mirror personal guidance. For example, scrying is the practice of looking into an object, usually a reflective one, with the hope of getting a vision. Scrying mirrors have retained some popularity. I played a game recently called Contradiction, where a scrying mirror was a piece of evidence in a murder mystery, and I gotta admit, I was a little anxious about it. One old divination ritual suggested that if women walked backwards up a dimly lit flight of stairs holding a hand mirror and a candle, they'd be able to catch a glimpse of their future husband. There was also a chance they would see the Grim Reaper, indicating that they would die before they got married, and I know what you're thinking right about now. Roses, what does this have to do with bathrooms? Quit talking about mirrors and get to the point already. Well, in modern day, this ritual of calling for visions and ghosts has moved to the bathroom. One of the most famous legends, which I am sure you've heard of, is Bloody Mary, where it is said that if you look into a mirror in a dimly lit room and chant Bloody Mary three times, a corpse will appear in the mirror, sometimes covered in blood. And while it didn't originally start in the bathroom, it has definitely been moved there because that was the best spot to do it. Most people have a mirror in their bathroom, and the nature of the ritual is very intimate so it makes sense to go to a small, private room with a mirror to do this. In American Horror Story, a similar idea is used. Instead of saying Bloody Mary, the character is saying, Here, piggy, 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 in front of the mirror, which would cause the ghost of the piggy man to show up and slaughter the person chanting the mantra. I distinctly remember overhearing kids in elementary school all trying to convince each other to go into their bathrooms with the lights off and chant Bloody Mary while staring into the mirror. And I swear to God, I was way too scared to do that. I can't think of a scarier situation than being in a bathroom alone with the lights off with a bloody corpse appearing in the mirror. Nope. We've taken these fears and legends and used them all the time, from seeing ghosts in the bathroom mirror, seeing messages from the other side being written in the steam on the mirror, from hands coming out of the mirror to hurt you, or just hallucinating in general. They commonly happen in front of the bathroom mirror. And I'll tell you something, mirrors in bathrooms still freak me out. Not mirrors in bedrooms, not mirrors in the living room, specifically the ones in bathrooms. It doesn't have to be the supernatural showing itself in the mirror either. For some reason, serial killers love to hide out in the bathroom, waiting to tackle their victim. Think about the amount of instances in movies where someone is looking into the mirror, then briefly looks down to wash their hands, and when they look back up, suddenly someone is looking back at them. Or opening the medicine cabinet to grab something, closing it, and bam, weird thing in the mirror. Which is the perfect segue to talk about murderers and dead bodies in tubs. There are so many movies that use the bathroom to terrorize us. Films frequently do this by hiding a murderer in the shower or revealing a dead body in the tub. We could probably discuss the topic forever because of how common it really is, so I want to shift gears away from movies for just a bit and discuss how bathrooms are presented in interactive media. The Colonel's Bequest, an adventure game from 1989, pays homage to the psychological horror movie Psycho, and after I witnessed this, I refused to take showers. I was afraid of moving the shower curtain aside because something terrible could be hiding behind it, and I hated having it closed while I was in there. Sometimes I still find myself leaving the shower curtain open while I'm not using it, even when I'm not consciously scared. 
I think one of the most effective moments comes from Clock Tower for the Super Famicom. As you're approaching the bathroom, you can hear water dripping or squishing or, or something. It's just this really off-putting noise. And then that amazing music starts up. The game has no shame in basically telling you that something went down in the bathroom and it makes the player apprehensive to enter. And when you do enter, everything is obscured with steam. When you look in the shower, a corpse is hanging there and the scissor man, one of the antagonists, leaps up after you and you now have to book it. I do think it helps that we've had similar scenes in movies prior to this. It helped inspire how developers could use bathrooms in video games because that interaction makes it so much more intense and scary. Even when a game is more on the comical side, I'm still always afraid to interact with their bathrooms because I just know something's gotta be in there. In Gone Home, though not a scary game at all, I was afraid of the bathroom and the developers knew I would be. They have a little bit of a fake out scene where what looks to be blood in the bathtub turns out to be red hair dye. Regardless, I did not want to stay in there. No matter how many times I come across a bathroom in a video game, I never feel good about entering it. I don't necessarily think video games do anything unique in terms of what you find in the bathroom, but the interactive experience is unique and prime for a variety of jump scares. But I'm pretty sure the scariest thing I found in a bathroom is this weird middle-aged man from Gabriel Knight 2. He let me interrogate him about werewolves while he was drinking beer in the tub, just living his best life. And then he kicked me out so he could wank. I do think it's possible to have a natural fear of the bathroom just as a room, even if you haven't been exposed to scary tropes often seen in movies or video games. You are absolutely at your most vulnerable when you're in one. I cannot think of a more defenseless sensation than being stuck on a toilet or being naked in the shower because if something does happen to you, you're kind of boned. When I was in college, my dorm decided to have a fire alarm test at but o'clock in the morning, and we all had to evacuate the building around 6 a.m. My roommate was still in the shower. She was still washing suds out of her hair, and she was scrambling to get out, just terrified that there actually was a fire. And even if there wasn't an emergency happening, no one wants to be walked in on when they're in the shower or trying to go to the bathroom. I don't know a single person who hasn't had someone accidentally enter a stall while you're still doing your thing, and it can be embarrassing embarrassing and that embarrassment can incite fear. The fear of what if someone sees me at my most powerless. And I think that's the main line of thinking that storytellers harness to create terrifying environments. Taking a fear that starts in people's real lives, one that has the actual possibility of happening, and twisting it until it becomes nightmare fuel. It really is the ultimate way of scaring people. The reason the Here's Johnny scene in The Shining was so frightening was because Wendy was trapped in the bathroom, a tiny, tiny bathroom with no means of escape. This is why sometimes fiction writers have their character run to the bathroom when they're in danger. It's a room people typically feel safe in, a haven of sorts, but it's also a place you can get trapped in with nowhere to run and commonly no windows to escape out of. That being said, let's explore some more specific ways that are grounded in reality that are used to scare the shit out of us. <laughs> yep, toilet humor. I'm surprised it took me this long to make that quip. I think that most people would blame the aforementioned movie Psycho for their fear of bathrooms or just showers in general, but I didn't see that movie until I was an adult. So I blame my personal fear of bathrooms on Ghostbusters 2. There's a scene where Dana, one of the main characters, is drawing a bath for her baby. As she turns on the faucet, pink ooze comes out and turns into a monster of sorts, and it spooked the hell out of me. I wasn't necessarily scared of the ooze monster itself, but more of the visual that something that was not water was coming out of the faucet. It's so unnatural to the eye to see something viscous and weird filling up the tub, and it's bad enough when your pipes are clogged with rust and dirt and water ends up looking filthy when you're showering, bathing, or washing your hands. But things like ooze and blood are far worse, and I was afraid to take baths after this. Outside of fictionalized stories, devastating things do happen in the bathroom in real life. People often take their lives there or engage in self-destructive behavior. Just speaking personally, I battled bulimia for a little over 10 years. So the bathroom became a place of lies and secrets and gave me this very intense emotional fear. 
It's not just a room we use for fictionalized frights like oversized arachnids and weird pink ooze. It's almost difficult to discuss, and using these kind of specific fears can come across as exploitative or disrespectful, but when done right, they're some of the scariest ways to make use of the bathroom. Bathtubs especially are used to show characters in mentally vulnerable states. Imagine something you depend on for comfort, something you use in the privacy of your own home to take a break from the stress of the day, suddenly becoming a place of devastation. That to me is a very scary feeling, and I always feel that well of anxiety bubble up in me when I see things like anguish or depression being represented with a person struggling in the bathtub. So some fears are definitely rooted in reality, though for the most part, I do I do think we've constructed this phenomenon by exploiting real life fears and exaggerating them to the max. I really think this is a fascinating topic, and I realize I've just subjected all of you to some pretty gross and off-putting clips, but they support the point I'm trying to make. I sometimes wonder if I would be afraid of video game bathrooms had I not seen movies like Ghostbusters 2 or Arachnophobia as a youngin. I also don't see these tropes fizzing out anytime soon because of how effective they are. I gotta admit, putting this video together was tough. I mean, that train spotting clip where the guy gets sucked into the toilet? Gnarly. And that huge fucking spider in the shower? Not great. I'm not even gonna reshow that footage here, I'm just gonna include something lighthearted to end this on a pleasant note. Are you afraid of bathrooms? Please do let me know in the comments because this is something I am genuinely interested in. No sarcasm, I want to know your fears. Now, don't you feel like taking a bath tonight? Have fun! Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video about the fear of bathrooms. This was an interesting script to write. If you have other topics you're interested in hearing me talk about, leave a comment or hit me up on social media. And if you feel compelled to support the channel after listening to me discuss toilets, then do check out my Patreon campaign. As always, I'll see you guys in the next one.